Okay, I got a guy who did ask a very good question there. He says, uh, how do you build sexual tension? <laughs> I have so many patterns to do this. I, I, <laughs> I have stories that I tell that include experiences of other people uh, where there's sexual tension being built. I have a favorite pattern I call the dream pattern. I'll say to a woman, do you ever remember your dreams? Do you have a dream that keeps coming up because it's so powerful? I'll let her talk. I'll listen to her answer. I'll say, because I have this one dream that I only had it once, but it's so familiar to me. I can close my eyes and I can feel it. Just everything about the dream. I can see all the imageries as I talk about it, Debbie. Did you hear the command? I can see all the imagery as I talk about it, Debbie. I'm already giving her commands to imagine what I'm saying. So it goes like this. I'm looking for a place to live. I'm walking through these beautiful woods and I don't know how well you can imagine this as I describe it, but they're beautiful redwood trees and they have the most rich, beautiful brownish colored wood to them, <laughs> wood to them. And the sky is blue and I can feel the scent of the fresh pine trees. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm longing for a home, a place to live where I see this cabin. And I instantly know it's gonna be my home, not a house, but a home. The difference is a house is just a shelter, but a home is a place where you stop and you get that feeling that says, you belong here. This is where you wanna stay. You never wanna leave because here's where you must be. So I see this cabin, it has a sign on it that says for lease and with a phone number. And I know I should wait, but have you ever felt something that just feels so inviting? That feels so irresistible. You had to have it and you couldn't wait for permission. He just went for it. Me, now, as I continue to tell this story, I think you'll find something interesting. So I go and I open the door. Immediately, I know a woman lives there. It just has that female touch. There's the walls themselves seem special. It's like there's energy radiating from these special feminine walls. <laughs> you guys getting this? <laughs> Are you hearing it? Uh, you're getting it. I can see that you're... I can see that you're you're getting it right over there. Ian is absolutely loving it. I, I'm just looking at Ian's face. I just love it. Time. I'll say anyway. I walk in and immediately I know she's a photographer because there's photographs all over the walls. There's a big photograph at the end of the hallway, the end of the cabin that takes up the whole wall. Beautiful photograph. And on the coffee table, there's a big book that says Bali. And I open it up and there's a picture of Bali and the sand is so beautiful. I don't again know how well you can imagine and picture and experience as I describe it, but it's white powdered sand. And I could even imagine walking through that powdered sand like a sugar donut powdered, feeling the warmth against my feet looking out at the ocean, the water is a crystal clear bluish green. And it's just so tempting. I can imagine stepping out into that water, feeling its warmth swirling around my legs, the warmth of the sun uh, warming my skin to a flush and a blush. And it's just so amazing. So what am I doing? I'm getting your mind primed. Before I get sexual, I'm getting your sensory rich experiences. And then all of a sudden she walks in the door and there's this instantaneous, this connection. And immediately I can feel a bond of instant trust, Debbie, because she wasn't afraid of me at all. Rather than screaming or yelling, she looks a little startled, but she's, oh, hi, can I help you? And I said to her, you know, I know I should have waited, but it just, it just so seemed so inviting. I just had to enter. Of course, I should have waited, but I just could. Did you guys hear it? Enter? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I had to come inside. I'm leaning on it so you can hear it. So I had to come inside. 
I hope you don't mind. And she said, no, no problem. I'm in a hurry. I've got to get to the airport. I forgot my bag, but let's, let me show you around. I'll fix you a cup of tea. So we're looking around at all the various pictures and we come to that picture that I told you about the far end of the wall. And suddenly we stopped talking and you could feel that excitement. You know, that special growing tension just before that, before that first soft electric brush of the lips. And you know, something big's about to go down here. And I sort of brush up against her and she brushes up against me. And we can feel the heat coming from each other's bodies, but it's just so intense. We just break away because we don't want to get anything started that you have to go through with this. So she says, anyway, listen, I got to go. Here's my card. Call me anytime. And she leaves. I remember feeling, wow, I'm so turned on right now because this feels so good. I, I'm glad she left because if she not, if she didn't leave, I would have just fucked your brains out. <laughs> Something along those lines. I'm making it up as I go, but you guys, you guys are probably thinking that's way too wordy. But once you get her attention and you begin to talk in that special rhythm that holds her focus, then she'll stick with you. If you're just talking like this and saying, then Debbie and blah, 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 blah. You know, you've got to pace it, talk in that kind of hypnotic tonality. I don't start out with that tonality because that would scare her. I gradually build up to it. Do you see? Did that answer your question? I think Ian is just so amazed right oh, now. <laughs> I'm just amazed. Uh, but it, it's really intentionally that you're super focused uh, on or bringing the focus to feeling it uh, and the kinesthetic part about it, isn't it? Right. right. That whole thing about looking at the picture book in Bali, walking along the beach, feeling the powdered sand on your feet, looking out the water. Yeah, I'm really getting them into a sensory rich description before I get into the sexual metaphor. I didn't start with that growing building tension before that first soft brush. Of I didn't start with that. I started by exciting her imagination with all this sensory rich stuff before I went into the sexual metaphor. Does that make sense? Really yeah. nice, really, really elegant. I'm giving you guys diamonds. This is not gold, this is platinum. Have you got any shocking stories where it goes wrong and the girl sees all through it and just uh, slaps you and pisses off? I've never been, the only time that anything ever happened is I was sergeant a girl sitting down over a coffee and this guy walks up and says, be careful. That's, I call this guy Mesmo. He's going to get your pants off with hypnosis. He'll hypnotize you into bed. And, and she later told me after I debriefed her, she said, that was the thing that really convinced me because I wanted to see what you got. That's happening. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't get in the way. Well, it's the it's windy. I had all her clothes off. I was ready to fuck her. But something felt weird in her vagina when I was putting my fingers in there. So I didn't do it. But later... Her years, a couple years later, I fucked her assistant, someone who was her assistant at the time. And she said, you know, do you know a woman named Wendy Zorny? I said, yeah, I know Wendy. I, I almost got with her a couple of years back. She said, well, I used to work for her. And I called her and told her that I met you. She said, don't go near him. He'll have your pants off in minutes. I went inches with him, sleeping with him. So a couple of times, Women, by the time they got to my house, they had already suggested themselves into fucking me. <laughs> so thank you, all those people who warned you off. But no, I've never been caught. Never. I have a prepared thing. If I ever did get caught, I know what to say. So you're saying they, they love this approach. They love it. And they never. Yeah. OK, cool. Because it sounds. The worst that happens is nothing happens. So they just don't respond. Right. And I'll try a couple of different approaches and I'll cut bait. So, oh, well, I'm no worse off than I was before. Oh, yeah. If you allow yourself to go with it, it's better than cinema. It's, it's like a, a cinema playing with the inner world. Really, really nice hypnosis. Do you ever get a situation where you're overwhelmed with female attention and you need yeah. to... 
I wish. No, I have to work it. <laughs> you still work it, so it never becomes a problem. It's uh... Well, when I do seminars and there's women in the audience, that's different. I'm like the rock star. Uh, and I'm also using NLP for two days. I'm throwing hypnosis at them for two days. So two days of being hypnotized by me, they're going to want to fuck me. And... I had a girl, her panties were soaking so much, she brought extra pairs, she had to keep changing them. She kept running to the bathroom or up to her room on the brakes to change her panties. But she'd been watching my videos on YouTube for months and months. So my voice was in her head. Okay. So you never get a situation where the women are too needy because you're always enjoying it and evolving your techniques as you're going along. I don't, if I sense needy, I'm not there. Don't you dare hit me. My cat's raising one paw like she's going to smack the good one. Don't you dare. All righty, there we go. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, she's, she's asleep sitting up. She can go to sleep sitting up. It's the weirdest thing. She's either asleep or deep in meditation. How can you sleep sitting up, you silly cat? All right, guys. Love you. See you later. I'm a genius.